So the important issue around Lloyd's is to understand that it's a marketplace rather than a, a company. So we act as a host to 70 plus syndicates, each of which are underwriting insurance lines of business globally. We've been doing it 300 years, and we specialize really in the world's largest and most complex risks. But a great so privilege to be said. involved with one of the world's greatest insurance businesses with a proud tradition, but also mm. one that wants to look forward to address emerging risks, developing risks, be at the center of discussion around how we manage our world. You identified banking and asset management before as important components of the financial services industry. Insurance needs to sit alongside that. We are managing risks all the time. So we understand about how to deliver relief at the point of need. We understand how to price risk. So one of the great opportunities at Lloyd's is to be a convener of the power of insurance globally here to make a difference. The impacts those natural catastrophes then have on things like a climate and on, on population movement. And these things aren't at all fully understood. And they also struggle a little bit with the issue of the timeline. That one of the challenges of capitalism is that it's relatively short term in nature. And that's compounded by uh, the democratic countries around the world who have political cycles that are somewhere between three and five years long. And yet a lot of these issues that you're raising in terms of things like population migration, much longer term in terms of their impact. Same with climate change, much longer term in terms of its impact. And so how do we get the right time and attention devoted to things that appear to be today beyond the immediate horizon? One of the problems of the capital model is that it's rewarded sort of top line growth and bottom line growth without really testing whether that growth is resilient. We've allowed ourselves to put a lot of debt on our balance sheet, some of it inadvertent in terms of the debt that we've had to put on global government balance sheets to support ourselves through the pandemic. And all of these are actually wearing out our resilience rather than helping build our resilience. The offset to that, I think, is innovation. It's about supporting risk-taking. And so if the world is genuinely becoming a more dangerous place from a variety of reasons where claims will arise because events are happening more frequently and with greater impact, then we absolutely need to be investing in our resilience, in the resilience of our infrastructure. So there's challenge in there, but there's also huge opportunity. So if you look at things in isolation, it doesn't make sense to do certain things. But when we look at it in terms of our natural catastrophe risks around the world, we are obviously yeah. hedging one risk against another risk. And what we also identify is that where capital comes in from outside a region to help rebuild, it will rebuild more quickly because you're bringing in capital from outside. Otherwise, you're just redistributing existing resources within an environment or a particular geography. Making sure that we can move capital freely to a point of need is a huge, hugely important issue for us.